Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to implement the filter method on a prototype. This is very similar to the one that we did previously, right? If you're noticing there's a pattern here. We implement map on a prototype. No, first we use map method to extract data from an array and then we implement map on a prototype. Last one, we, we use the filter method to extract data from an array and now we're gonna implement the filter method on a prototype. So this is gonna look really similar to the last few that we did. It would teach us a lot about filter method if we tried to implement a version of it that behaves exactly like array.prototype.filter. It can use either a for loop or a for each loop. A pure function is allowed to alter local variables defined within its scope, although it's preferable to avoid that as well. I'm, I'm gonna try to come back to this and describe it once we have our code written. Write your own prototype my filter, and remember last time we did my map, now we're doing my filter which should behave exactly like the filter uh, prototype. Uh, you may use a for loop or a for each loop. Okay, so how do we wanna go through this? We wanna say, okay, so here what we're saying is, this is basically saying, um, let's console log uh, the new S. Okay, so we've got an empty array right now. So nothing's happening. Why is that? Well, we're returning an empty array here. So um, right now, um, string.myfilter. So we're going this or s.myfilter, which is my filter. And then we're just creating a new array and doing nothing with it. And then at the end of that, returning the new array. So what we want to do is add to the new array based on each element. So the callback function is being called on um, each element. So what we want to say, first we need to iterate through the S, right? S is here. We want to say, we want to pull out each of these elements at once. So we can say for, we're going to let the index equal zero, while the index is less than um, this dot length, right? Because this goes back to this guy, or to the S, which is the array. Um, and then we want to increment I. And now let's say that, so this dot length, okay. Now what we wanna do is say, new, we wanna push onto our new array. What, we're, what are we going to push on there? We're going to push on the result of the callback. So the callback being pushed onto uh, the, this at position I. Okay, cool. And so now we're returning true, true, false, true. Now, why is that? We're pushing on whether or not the callback of this dot at i is um, true. So, okay, cool. I actually want to do this differently. Our callback and i. So this is what's returning true, true, false, true. Now, what it, the uh, callback function, it's being passed into here, and we're returning the item if uh, the item um, if the item is uh, evenly divisible by two, so say like 23, evenly divisible by two, no, it's got our uh, modulo, okay, so 23 modulo two is equal to one, and so therefore it's returning true. The callback is says is returning true, and then here when it's 20, uh, when it's 98, modulo two is going to render out to zero, right, because two is evenly divisible by 98. Zero is not equal to one, and then therefore it returns false. But this isn't exactly what we want to do. What we want to do with filter is we want to add only the elements that return true. So what we can do is say, move this guy. Um, and say, instead of saying um, returning or adding to the array the true, true, the true or false, what we can do is add uh, this dot i, right? Now we're getting the variables, but that's not, we don't want to add all of them. So what we want to do is put a conditional statement. If uh, this at i call back this at i, then we want to push the new array. Now we're only getting, ret we're, our, we're returning the um, odd numbers. And I'm pretty sure this will pass the test. And so, yeah, this is the for loop. Okay, so what if we wanted to do it with a for each loop? Um, we could say um, this dot for each, and then we could say function, 
and we can say individual element. Uh, let's say uh, if individual element, right? Uh, oh, wait, we want to, and here's where we'll pass in the callback. Then we want to, uh, the new, we're going to push on to the new array dot push, and we're going to push on, what are we going to push? The individual element. Cool. So this is getting us, so that's just a different way to write this exact same thing. Um, now, another thing we could do is make this ES6 to refactor it, to look a little more modern. And that would return the exact same way. So that's three different ways to do this, right? And so, yeah, that'll if we run the test, that'll pass as well. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, one quick thing, I said that a pure function is allowed to alter local variables defined within its scope, although it's preferable to avoid that as well. So a pure function is allowed to alter local variables defined within its scope. A pure function. So here we have, we're calling this my filter a pure function, right? And so here we want to, this new array, we're altering this variable. We're, but because it's within this scope, it makes sense. That's what this means. Because we're altering the local variables, it makes sense to do that. We would not want to say something like, like remove the last element of this, of the, uh, of the thing that it's being called on. That would be, that would be altering our code and that would add to, that would lead to some really bizarre um, errors on, in a big program. It's very similar to the last few. This is actually something that's really useful to spend a lot of time learning. If this doesn't make like really, really clear sense to you, I would say reset it and do it again and do this a few times until you really understand what's going on here. Because this structure of functional uh, callback functions and things becomes super useful when you get into higher level programming of web apps. And so, yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.